Hey, what's happening guys? In this video, I want to cover how to use Clojure Spec. So let's get into it. I'm cool, yeah. cool, so if you're not familiar with what Spec is, it's basically a way we can use Clojure to validate that the data that we're working with is the data we expect to be working with. So let's look how we can use it. I have a, basically an empty project here. I'm going to start this Clojure project using depths.eden. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new file here and call it depths. Eden, and then I'm going to put a blank map in here and that will create our project. It's all you need for a closure project. Then I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it, well, I'm going to put it inside a directory called source and I'm just going to call it core.clj and then I'm going to namespace this file as uh, specs, what do I have, spec tutorial.core. Cool. And then in order to get started with spec, we need to require the spec library. So to do that, we just use the require key here and we pass through the name of the library, which is closure.spec.alpha. It's been in alpha forever. I'm sure one day it'll be out of alpha. And then I'm going to require this library as S. Now let's actually just start up our repo. So I'm going to use Culver to start the project repo and connect to devs.edn. I'm just going to move the output here and minimize this. So once the ripple started, we can go to our core.clj and evaluate this using alt enter. So now spec is in our project. So there's a few functions I want to cover to show how we can actually utilize spec. The first function I want to cover is the valid function. So I'm just calling valid from the spec namespace and valid takes in a predicate function. So we can check the predicate function string. A predicate function just returns true or false, whether the value passed through to it passes. And I'm going to pass through a string as the first argument. So a string. And if we evaluate this, it evaluates to true. But if I pass through a number here, it will evaluate to false. If we wanted to combine multiple predicates, what we could do is use the AND function that's provided by spec. So S AND. And this way we can pass through two predicates. So let's say if something is a string, we can also pass through our own predicate function. So I'm going to create an anonymous function here and it's just going to check whether the count of a string. So the count of a string that we pass in is less than, let's say less than five. I'm going to wrap this in a definition and I'm going to call it short string. Now, if we evaluate this, we can actually use this with the valid function. So we check whether something is a short string. So and and is a short string that if we check it with on the code again, damn, it's not a short string. So this works for simple values, but say we had maybe we want to check if something was a collection of short strings. Well, we could also do that. So what we could do is we could create a new definition here and we could check if something is call of a short string and then this would take in the collection of function from our spec namespace and then we can just pass through short string here and now we have a spec to test whether something is a collection of a short string so we can go s valid and we can check collection of short string so if we pass through a collection here of a b and c this will evaluate to true but if we put in a number here it's false because one is not a string at all and if we put in on the code again as the last value, it's also going to be false because on the code again is not a short string as we have just seen. Cool. We can also, instead of using and, we could check if something is one thing or another by using the or function that's given to us in spec. So let's define if something is, I don't know, let's make, let's maybe we want this to work. This where it's either a string or a number. So we can define whether something is um, string, well, let's say short string or number, we can then say s or, and this works a bit differently. So this takes in a key and then the predicate. So the first one would be short string, and then that will be the function, the short string function that we just created. And then we can check if something is number, and then we can use the built in number predicate define this and now we're checking whether something is a short string or a number and then we can use this with s valid and we can 
say short string or number and if we pass through a it'll be true if we pass through one it'll be true but if we pass through um, on the code again again it's gonna be false because it's not a short string or a number and the same goes with other values so if you pass through like true a boolean value it's going to return false so the reason why we actually use keys here for our all function is so that if this spec fails we can actually get some information out so to get that information we run the explain function and if we execute this it will return null but in our output we'll see that true failed because it it didn't pass the string predicate and true failed also because it didn't pass the number predicate so let's pass through on the code again and evaluate this and now we see on the code again failed because it didn't pass the short string predicate because its count is greater than five and it also didn't pass the number predicate but if something does pass like if we pass through 10 we'll also get null back but now we'll see a success message and that's the reason why we pass those keys here. So this is all cool for like simple values and lists, but with Clojure, you're going to be working a lot with maps and you want to validate the structure of a map. Let's see how we can do that. I'm going to create a, a map here. I'm going to define a map. I'm going to call it F1 car. And this map is going to have three keys. It's going to have the team key. And in this case, the team is Mercedes. It's going to have a driver key and the driver will be Lewis Hamilton. And then it'll have a starting position. So starting pause and the starting position will be one. So if we want to check that these keys and their values match a spec, we can use what's called a spec definition. So we, the spec library has a def function and this takes a fully qualified keyword. And the fully qualified keyword will be how we refer to the spec. So a fully qualified keyword can be written out as spec tutorial.call and then let's call this one f1 car spec or the shorthand is instead of having to write out our namespace like this we can just put a colon cool and then we need to say what keys we expect the map to have so we use the s keys and then the s keys function takes in the required keyword so these keys are required and then a list of the required keys so we need to also fully qualify them. So we need to say team, driver, and starting pause. So if we evaluate this, now we have a spec for how we feel our map should look. So we can now run s valid. We pass it to the name of our spec, which is f1 car spec, and then our f1 car. Evaluate this, and it evaluates to false. And that is because these keys aren't fully qualified. So if we just update these values like that, evaluate this, now this is gonna pass. But obviously you don't wanna always have fully qualified namespaces in your maps. So what we can do is we can go rec un to require unqualified keywords, reevaluate this, reevaluate that to make sure. And now we can reevaluate this and it passes the spec. Now we can see that our map has the right keys, but we're not checking to see whether the values match what we expect. What we can do is we can actually run sdef and we can now pass through the names of these keys. So we pass through sdef team and we know that team must fit the string predicate and we know that driver must fit the string predicate and let's say Let's say starting pause must be a string predicate as well. So let's just evaluate all of these. And now if we check whether the spec is valid, it's false. And if we run explain on this and go to our output, we can see that one failed and because it's not a string. So we know that starting pause needs to be a string. So if we made this a string here, evaluated this and then ran this, we should see success here and we do. Awesome. Okay. So I'm just gonna put make this a number and update the spec to be an int. Evaluate this, reevaluate this, and I'm gonna actually use um, another function that we haven't looked at called conform and evaluate this. And if our F1 car conforms to our spec, then we'll get our map back. But if it doesn't conform, so let's make this a string again and reevaluate this then we see that our closure spec is invalid. 
So another thing we can do with spec is we can make sure that we have functions that are receiving the right arguments. So I'm gonna actually update this Formula One car. Just make sure this is an integer again. Um, cool, and I'm gonna add in, let's say a positions key here. And that's just gonna be a vector of the like the last position. So let's say three, 10, six, evaluate this. And we can actually like check if this conforms to the spec still. And it still conforms and that's because um, extra keys don't matter on spec. So I'm just gonna add the positions key here and I'm gonna spec it out here. I'm gonna say positions and that needs to be a collection of int. Evaluate this, evaluate this. Now, if we put in a string here, so let's say five, evaluate this, it's gonna be invalid and that's because this is a string, not an int. So now, now it passes, we have a valid F1 car. So I'm gonna make a function here that we can spec out. So I'm gonna make a function here and it's just gonna check if the car got points in the last race. So let's see, scored. And that's gonna take positions. Let's say it takes the last position, last pause and min pause. So then we check if the last pause was less than the minimum position like the minimum position to score, then we've scored. Now we can run this function, we can say scored, we'll grab the first position from our positions, from our F1 car, we'll check it against this 10. So it did score. So if we made this, let's say 18, evaluated this, cool, then it didn't score. So now we have our function, so let's spec it out. To spec out functions, we use S, F, def, and then we pass through the function that we want to spec out. So in this case, it's scored. And then we want to check if we're getting the right args. So we pass through the args key, and then we get the result of this scat function. And scat kind of works the same as this all function, where the first key is the key that we get that shows us what's wrong in the error. So I'm going to say is number, and that's going to be, it's going to check whether this last pause is an int. Actually, you can even call, say this last pause. And then we wanna check if min pause is also an int. So min pause, and then must also be an int. Evaluate this. Now we spec'd out our function, but it won't work offhand. So we can pass through a string here, and it's just gonna break, but it won't tell us why. If we instrument this function using our spec by using, oh, we actually need to, impl we need to uh, import a new namespace here, so. I'm gonna import from closure.speckTest.alpha. I'm gonna call this s test. Evaluate this. You have to say as. Evaluate this. And you mustn't put a colon here. Evaluate this. Cool, now we have the s test namespace. So in s test namespace, there's this instrument function. And then we pass through the quoted name of our function. And now we've instrumented our function. If we pass through a string of 10 here, it'll break and it'll tell us invalid arguments to our function. And if we go to our output, here we can see that 10 failed because it's not an int. And the, the error is at min pause. So we see that min pause maps to min pause here and it expects this to be an integer. Cool beans. But we can also check whether the return type matches what we expect. So we can go here add a return key and we can say boolean, evaluate this. And now it's gonna check, well, it actually won't just check if to see if the return type is a boolean. But what we can do is check this function using the check function. So if we go s test forward slash check and we pass through the function we wanna check, which in this case is our scored function, then we can run this here. And in our output, it fails and it fails because we're missing a dependency. So the dependency we're missing is this test.check dependency. And to include it, we just copy it here, go to depths.eden and put in a depths key. And depths is a, takes a map of our dependencies. Now what we can do is, I think we have to restart our REPL. So I'm just gonna close this REPL and start it again. Reevaluate our namespace, then reevaluate our F1 car, reevaluate our scored spec, instrument it, and now if we check it, we can go here 
Cool, and now we can see that it's run this function a thousand times and it's checked and it's passed. And that's because the return type is Boolean. But if we change this return type to a string, evaluated our spec and rerun this check, cool, it breaks. The specification base check failed. And within this data key, we see that the predicate of string failed against the value false. And that's cool. So generative testing basically runs this with a whole bunch of randomly generated numbers and it checks for us that this is working. So if we make this Boolean again, there's one more thing we can test. fdef also takes in an fn keyword and this is a function that runs after the function returns a result. So we can test using both our args and the return value. So we can take in a function here and it gets a map, which I'm just going to destructure the keys out of. So keys, and I want to get the arguments. So args and return. And then within this function, you can basically do a check. We can get, and then we can get the last pause out of our args. So last pause, get last pause out of args. And we can say, I don't know, if last pause is less than six, just like an arbitrary failure. If it's less than six, then it'll work. So we run this and then it fails. And that's because our predicate function fails. The value was six. So if, and that's because six is not less than six, obviously. Cool guys. And that's a basic intro into how spec works. I hope you guys liked it. I really like the generative testing part of it. It's really easy to make generative tests <laughs> using spec and it's something that's really handy. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I have tons of stuff coming. So see you in the next one. Cheers.